Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Jack here. So the 2017 NBA Draft Review is the second part of our lottery video, which I'm going to throw a card on uh, right here. And, and you can watch that after uh, this video. Have it open up in a new window there. And it's just the continuing the conversation that we started with in the NBA lottery video. I hope you guys enjoy. And, and now that we've covered the lottery here, guys, just going to move into some more thoughts about about different selections and, and teams here in the draft. And first off for me was I I really liked what the Bucks did. Um, and, and that's not going to be – they're not going to be covered, you know, as a tremendous winner, I think, from this draft. But picking up DJ Wilson, picking up Sterling Brown, two guys who offensively are skilled, can score the ball, and that's what they need. Uh, on their team, but they also fit in with what they are doing in positionless basketball. It's tremendous size of both of these players. Wilson, at you know, he's going to be, I think, a, a playmaking four at 10, 7 3 wingspan, a guy who really played tremendously well in the NCAA tournament and could be a scoring power forward. And, you know, with Giannis there, Giannis can play so many different positions that it gives him tremendous. Versatility. It also hedges their bets a little bit because you don't know uh, what Jabari you're going to get when he comes back from his second ACL injury. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, uh, Brown, excuse me, in the second round here, they needed shooting. And, and this guy, Sterling Brown, is a tremendous shooter that not two guys have been talking about. And with his size, I, I think it was a tremendous selection in the second round. Yeah, I, I would agree with you there. I think I want to go back here to the Kings, who we mentioned earlier, and I would say arguably they had the best draft of anybody, and they needed it after giving up their franchise guy, DeMarcus Cousins, for very little um, to the, of course, the New Orleans Pelicans, and just the picks that they got, going and getting Fox, who was the right guy at five, he'll be their starting point guard right away, going and getting Justin Jackson, at, at, at who will probably play small forward, like you said, Jack, very solid 3 and D type of guy. They went and got Harry Giles with their third first-round pick at 20 overall, who is, to me, a lottery ticket guy. He's going to either boom or bust. He's either going to be you know, a potential star if, if injuries don't affect him. And if they do, unfortunately, then you know it's sad to say, but they won't have uh, wasted too much to bring him in. So I think Harry Giles there, uh, Harry Giles there was, was perfect for the Kings. Um, they also went and got Frank Mason, who was uh, one of the, the uh, latest picked Naismith player of the years ever. Uh, and I think Mason, you know, he, he's not going to be a star. He's not going to be a starter maybe even, um, not with De'Aaron Fox, but he'll definitely be a good off-the-bench player. And he, he knows what his role will be. And I think he'll fill it to a T, and he'll, he'll be a great player for the Kings off the bench. And they just need to build as much depth, as many good players as they can, as they um, continue to rebuild their team into a team that can hopefully win. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you on that. And then moving here into you know a, a couple of other teams here that I thought did well. First of all, the fact that the Warriors were able to buy Jordan Bell in the second round was an absolute steal. Um, and just really that the Bulls sold the pick to them further the fact that they had a bad night, you know. Um, and I get and I get that the Bulls maybe didn't need uh, that pick or, or that player, rather, but that team needs talent. And the fact that they sold their, their second-round pick is very confusing to me especially after you get rid of Jimmy Butler. So you're definitely saving some money there. Um, it just seemed, it, it was a bit befuddling. Now, I started this by saying it was going to get into winners, so let's let's get back into that here. Um, the Lakers, right? As, as a Lakers fan, John, I, I know you, you thought they had a good night. I was very their happy. First, their first three selections, I really thought, hit the nail on the head. Really with, you know... Lonzo Ball, but then Kyle Kuzma, who is going to be a, a solid face-up four, who can shoot the three and rebound the ball very well. And, you know, with Larry Nance there already as a backup um, four-man, you know, I think that opens up the door maybe to a, a potential Julius Randle trade. Yeah. 
Um, and, and then as well, you know, Josh Hart. Every, I think everyone immediately loved that that selection where they got him. And, you know, their their lack of depth really at the wing position made that pick even more, uh, you know, impressive. And, and, you know, where they, especially where they got him. The end of the first round, great selection there by Magic and company. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, <clears throat> the last picks they had here was Thomas Bryant. The center out of Indiana, who um, you know gives you a lot of energy, gives you a lot of you know um, shot blocking potential. Maybe not the most athletic guy in the world, but you know a really solid player with a massive wingspan at seven six, um, and his height being six ten. So you know, a solid pick, a young guy for for the Lakers, and the Lakers really don't have a true center. Um, they do have Brook Lopez, of course, but in terms of a center for the future, they really don't have a true guy. And they have a Zubac. That's true. They do have um, Zubac, who who showed great potential last year, um, and he, he can potentially grow into that role. But I think Bryant um, is will compete to get on the roster. I think he will get on the roster, and I think he'll be a really good backup center for them um, right away, and then could turn into a starter down the road if he continues to get better. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't know. I'm not sold on Thomas Bryant really. He. You know, he tried to stretch his game out to the three-point line as a collegiate and had some success doing that. Um, but really, the guy who I think lacks any particular skill that's going to translate to the next level. Um, and and honestly, you know, he, he could make that team. But with Zubac, to me, with, with Tarek Black, especially they bring him back, I, I don't know where he fits in on, on that roster and, and was part of the reason why I only discussed their first uh, three selection. Um, but but now that we're in a little bit of a negative mood here, let's I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some of the picks, some of the selections that I didn't like in this year's draft because I think in a draft with lots of talent, lots of good players, there aren't gonna be as many negative takes. But I'll give you some. So first up, I thought what the Nuggets were doing throughout the draft was just. They added lots of depth, but I don't know if they got better. They added, you know, instead of taking Donovan Mitchell, they, they ended up with Tyler Wyden and Trey Lyles, both guys who are really 3-4 combos, but probably better as fours. Um, but neither one is going to be a tremendous player in the NBA, in, in my opinion. And then really, you know, they, they picked up Monte Morris, who I do like as a, as a backup point guard, um, but that was their 51st pick and, and their last, you know, addition in the draft. And I thought that was their best pick, which is never really a great sign for a team. Then you look at, to me, you know, you look at, excuse me, what, you know, the Raptors did. And, and I know that a lot of teams were higher on Oti and Anobi than others. Um, but to me... Really, his, his calling card is his defense. I know they needed to bring in a guy at the wing position or the four position, really, because Patrick Patterson might be on his way out. Uh, Serge Ibaka might be on his way out. So they needed some insurance there, especially because, you know, Bruno Caboclo hasn't uh, – he, he's now what? He should be here. It's been two years away and two, two more years by now, so he should be here. But he hasn't arrived yet, um, and, and so they need help on that position. I, I'm just not sold that OG is going to be the guy. Um, and and lastly, back to the Bulls. I, I just don't understand that trade. You know, especially the fact that they also gave up the 16th pick to the Timberwolves. It just didn't seem like they got the value that they should have. Especially, you know, with Levine coming off an injury, Dunn having a a very mediocre at best a rookie seat then it just seemed like they didn't get a ton of value for a very good player in Jimmy Butler yeah I think what happened with that trade and you know I said it was a good trade you know off you know talking to you guys last night um and you know since I've had the night to process it 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 really I, I agree with you it wasn't a great trade um but I think what happened with the Bulls was they knew that Butler didn't really want to be there. Butler wanted to get out, and they just couldn't get great value. And I think maybe 
their best bet would have been to trade with Cleveland. Um, and then once they fired David Griffin and there were reports that players were telling Butler not to come there because they were under, um, you know, they were under such turmoil all of a sudden. I think the Celtics didn't want to give as much as um, the the Bulls wanted them to give. So they, you know, they didn't pull the trigger. And ultimately, it was the T Wolves who can reunite Butler with Thibs and, and give that very young team a veteran um, presence that they sorely need. And you know, the, it wasn't a great trade, but they at least got some value. Like you said, Levine is coming off an injury, but you know. When he's healthy, he's shown he can be a really solid shooting guard. Um, not necessarily a blue chip guy, but a solid player nonetheless. And Dunn, you know, I'm, I'm still, he didn't have a great rookie year. Hopefully he'll get better. Um, I know obviously he doesn't have a great team there in in Chicago, but with, you know, playing next to Dwayne Wade, hopefully will help him out. Uh, and and uh, hopefully he'll get better and he can be their, their point guard of the future. Markkanen, neither of us were sold on Markkanen. Um, but yeah, I, I do agree. They definitely could have gotten more, I thought, um, for that Butler trade. But the pieces they got, at least, you know, they have some upside. Um, but yeah, they, they, should have, they really should have gotten more for Jimmy Butler. Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, let me just, to, to wrap us up here, a couple of guys who I liked in the second round, um, just in terms of fit, or, yeah, second round, who I, who I liked in terms of fit, Frank Jackson, first of all, 31st pick of the second round. Uh, good fit there, just going to NOLA, especially since you don't know what's happening with Drew Holiday. Good fit for the player. Uh, Frank Jackson's going to have an opportunity. I really liked, uh, as John said, Frank Mason going to the Kings. I thought that was a good fit for, for Frank Mason. Um, Ogilvy going to the Celtics, I thought was another good fit just for him. Uh, they need help at that four position. I think that's really where he's going to uh, have his most value at the next level. We talked about Jordan Bell earlier, just tremendous by the Warriors again. Jawan Evans, 39 to the Clippers. I thought that was interesting just because a lot of people compared him to Chris Paul, and he's going to be in a tremendous uh you know, environment there to, to be able to develop, I think, and, and become a very good point guard. Um, lastly, E.K. and Bogu at 47 to the Pacers. I just thought it was a great value. I thought this guy should have been taken somewhere in the early 20s, maybe even late teens in the first round. And so to get him where they got him, I, I just thought it was tremendous value. All right, guys, that is our wrap-up of the 2017 NBA Draft. Let us know what you think, who are your favorite picks, your least favorite, who are some of the sleepers you got your eye on. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. We've got some team-specific videos coming out, too, for the NBA Draft, so make sure you check those out as they release. Thanks for listening, guys. We're out.